Imagine that you've created an amazing product or a great service and uh, you want to create a brand for it. So what are the kind of steps that you might want to follow in creating this brand? Well, the first thing that you've got to figure out is what is the positioning of that brand? What is the value, what proposition fundamentally that brand is planning to create for customers? So this involves asking yourself, how do I want people to think of my brand? How do I want to people to think of my brand relative, for example, to other brands? What position do I want that brand to hold in the minds of customers? One of the challenges in branding is that a brand fundamentally is an intangible entity. In other words, you cannot touch, you cannot feel a brand, you cannot see it. And so how do we communicate a brand's essence? How do you get the message of what this brand is across? What we often use in branding is analogies. So for example, if my brand were a personality, like a celebrity, who would it be? If it was a form of transportation, what kind of form of transportation would it be? Is it a skateboard? Is it an airplane? So using analogies and to understand, to explain what your brand represents and is, it's often the very first step towards understanding what your positioning is in the mind of your audience. Great brands always have something in common. They have a great idea at the heart of that brand that then is used to influence everything that the brand does. Think of the Apple brand, for example. At the heart of the Apple brand is this idea of thinking different. And when you think about how that think different idea has influenced the action of the brand, the campaigns, the product, the design, everything about the brand is infused with this idea of thinking different. That is an example of how we take that positioning and then attach it to everything that we do from a marketing point of view. So that's the first step. So the second step usually involves communicating the brand idea to your customers. And we can do that in a wide range of ways, for example, through traditional marketing communications like advertising, promotions, and things like that, or using, for example, digital channels such as social media, and mobile marketing, video marketing, these kind of things. What do all these things have in common? Well, they're there to get the idea across to your customers so that they see it and fundamentally they're excited about the idea as much as you are because often we might love our products and services how do we make customers just as excited about our products and services as we are once you've done that track your brand performance measure the performance of your brand over time there's lots of tools that you can use to do it but it's very important to understand the impact that your brand has had on customers ultimately what a great brand does it influences consumers it influences how we feel and it influences how we think. So in other words, a great brand is one that has an effect on your mind and your heart. And why would we want to do that? Why would we want to influence someone's minds and hearts? Fundamentally, to influence their behavior. Because we want to make sure that they have a behavior that is in their own interest, they buy something that they like, that they need, but also it leads to market performance and financial performance for the organization. So track the performance of your brand. And the final step, make sure that you think about opportunities to grow that brand further. Sometimes you want to, for example, extend your brand into a new direction, or sometimes your brand needs to be reinforced or rejuvenated or refreshed. So think about maintaining the power of that brand over time. Because ultimately, the reason why brands fail in the long term is because we haven't paid enough attention to them from a managerial point of view. Brands need the attention, the investment in a very consistent way. We need to constantly maintain that connection with customers. So this is the overarching process that we use when we're managing brands. We need to start with an idea. We need to implement that idea, communicate it. We need to measure the performance of the brand and then manage the brand over time. One of the important things for any brand to remember is that even when you achieve success, you become a leadership brand. For example, you lead the market or you become something that has penetrated the market very successfully. One of the important things to remember is you need to continue paying attention to your brand because consistency in the investment, attention, energy that you put into your brand will be a driver of how long you will be able to retain the leadership position. When you look at some of the world's most successful brands, the ones that have been around for a long time, take Coca-Cola, for example, these brands that for more than 100 years have been able to be leaders in their market, they've done that 
by being consistent. They haven't forgotten the essence of branding, which is constantly connecting with customers across all your touch points, keeping the relationship going, maintaining their relevance and differentiation that has made you successful in the first place. And then when you look at the brands that have kind of been forgotten, the ones that perhaps used to be market leaders, that used to be uh, leadership brands within their sector, when you look at the reason why those brands faded away, it's often because they forgot that once you've achieved success, once you've achieved leadership, you need to protect it. You need to continue communicating, connecting with customers, keeping that consistency in the investment, in the energy, in the time, in the effort, in the financial resources that are devoted to your brand. One of the things that I'm interested in in my research is how do we deal as a brand, as a company, uh, with negative information about our brand. So 20 years ago or so, we didn't have this problem because we didn't have social media. We didn't have customers that were able to disseminate negative information very easily, very quickly, and for that information to reach a large number of consumers uh, very quickly. Nowadays, we have that problem. It's enough for one customer to be disgruntled. You've done something wrong, you made someone unhappy, they go online, they post one comment, and that comment can just explode and reach a lot of consumers at the same time. So this is a phenomenon that brands have to deal with. How do we manage that negative information? And in particular, how can we reduce the impact that it can have on customers? Because often, in many cases, that information might be exaggerated. It's very uh, common for consumers to exaggerate a negative experience, often to, uh, for example, get back at a company that disappointed them. And we've discovered a very interesting psychological mechanism that you can immunize customers, so you can make them resistant to negative information simply by measuring their immunity. And what I mean by that is simply by asking them how likely are you to change your view of our brand if exposed to negative information about our brand? Simply by asking that question, we found that you can predict how loyal customers are to your brand, but also you can boost their immunity to negative information later. So that if they were exposed to real negative information about the brand, they would be less likely to be affected by it. This is important because it's not enough to build a strong brand that people recognize, that people like, that people are loyal to. It's equally important to build a defense mechanism in case anything should be circulated around you about your brand that is negative and can quickly reach customers. The same process that applies to products and services as brands also applies fundamentally to any other kind of brand, including, for example, people. When you think about it, we all have a personal brand. What is your personal brand? Well, it's what people say when you're not in the room. That's your reputation. The strongest brands, the ones that are most effective, are the ones that align how you present yourself and how others see you. So when you ask others how they see you and that matches up with how you want to be seen, that it means that your brand is working. Whatever you're doing is functioning, the perceptions are aligned. But if you get very different responses, then you might have a problem. The perception of your brand doesn't match up with what you're trying to say. The amazing thing is that a lot of people would pay a lot of attention to how their products and services are branded. So they will hire very expensive agencies, they will spend a lot of resources and time and effort managing their corporate brands or their product brands, yet, they will not be as obsessive about their personal brand. Why is that? Because often we don't see ourselves as a brand, but fundamentally, if we do see ourselves as a brand, then we see that we can connect with people at a deeper level in a way that connects again with their hearts or their minds, or fundamentally both at the same time. Start to think about what makes you special. What is your point of difference? What, what is your value proposition to people? What is at the heart of you? So in the same way as great brands have a great idea at the heart of how they function and how they connect with consumers, what is your great idea? And then in particular, ask yourself the question, is that idea connected to everything that you do consistently? 
For example, the way you present yourself, the way you communicate with people, your emails, your social media presence, or when you speak to a large crowd, is the same story communicated in a compelling and consistent way? Because in the end, a great brand is something that pays attention to the details. And in the same way as great brands pay attention to the details, we should all pay attention to the details.